All right, so maybe you're on your way to work, you're out for a ride, or you just want to find a place to relax. So you go to a cafe. But when you check out the menu, you don't exactly know what you're looking at. You see words in Italian, Spanish, English, and what seems like calculus? You don't want to come off like a total noob, so you say what any confident coffee lover would say in a situation like this. Give me one of each. But seeing as putting that much caffeine in your veins and maybe pulling that much, thank you so much, uh, cash out of your wallet all at once is maybe not that advisable. I'm here to order all of these coffee drinks so that you don't have to. I'm here at Abyss Coffee Roasters in Barcelona and we're gonna be going through all the classic coffee drinks that you might expect at a specialty coffee shop. There's not exactly a strict consistency of coffee drinks around the world. You might go to a cafe here in Barcelona, they're gonna do things a little slightly differently than the other cafes right down the street or maybe in New York or in Dubai or in Shanghai. What I'm gonna do is give you a little bit of a, a guide of a starting place to demystify some of the, some of the names and some of the ratios uh, behind the coffee drinks. This is kind of similar to maybe a cocktail bar. One cocktail bar might make their old fashioned a specific way and comes down to preference, what their clients like and, and what you like. And so let's go on a little bit of a journey today here at Abyss Coffee Roasters. Let's start with the espresso. The typical, the classic, espresso will, will be a single shot, right? So if you're here in, in Spain, or if you're in Italy, or if you're in, in France, people would just come up to the bar and order un café, right? That's just a coffee. This is their default style of drinking coffee. So let's take a sip. Now here, we're doing double shots. Everything is double shot, and that's pretty typical for a specialty café. And so a double shot would start with 18 grams of coffee in the portafilter and come out to maybe around 40 milliliters, sometimes higher. So one to two, one to three ratio. What are some of the variations on just a pure espresso? Here we've got a, a double shot in a, in a small little cup like this, but you could also serve it in a slightly bigger cup, which is what they sometimes do here as well. So you can swirl it around a little bit more. You can smell all the aromas. Now, what about some other more Italian uh, style espresso drinks that you may have heard of? We've got the ristretto, right? Ristretto is like a restricted flow on the espresso. And what is that going to produce? That actually, it may have been a little bit of a reaction to the bitterness that you might find in an espresso, especially, uh, you know, some of the darker roasts there. So by restricting it and by maybe using a slightly finer grind as well, you can extract a little bit more of a syrupy uh, espresso drink. And so it might taste a little bit sweeter maybe even on a tinge of saltiness, a little bit tangy, some more acidity there, especially again, coming from these darker roasts. And then the opposite of that is the lungo or the you know, longer drink. And so that's just pulling more water through. And that's actually quite common here in Spain as well. Some places, and I wouldn't advise this, they'll make their Americanos as a lungo. So they'll just keep pulling the, the, the water, the espresso through the puck and what you're, what you're doing there is you're actually just over extracting the, the coffee. Hey buddy. <laughs> the dogs like coffee too. And so what I always recommend, instead of doing a lungo, order your espresso as it is, as the barista makes it with their specific recipe. It's all dialed in, all the flavors are there. And then you can add a little bit more water to taste in, in order to make our next drink. Kicking it up a notch, bigger cup, this is the Americano. Or as some might call it a long black. And so what I want to do for this, this drink is kind of compare what those two are. Some may say that there's different nuances and, and differences in the way you prepare the espresso, but most may agree that it's actually when you put the espresso in, whether you put the water first in the espresso over top or whether you put the espresso first and the water over top. But it really doesn't make a huge, huge difference uh, some may have a little bit more crema on the top, depending on how you administer the espresso into the hot water. So that can be nice, nice texture, maybe a little bit more of a kick on top, if that's your thing. Why is it called the Americano? There is a little bit of this legend that it was the, uh, the American troops in Italy who wanted a sort of a classic, traditional American coffee, which is much bigger, you know, very, very liquidy, very watery and of course the Italians drinking more espresso or even maybe the, the mocha pot at the time. And so they would water it down for the Americans. This is the Americano. But if you know a different version of that story, 
definitely leave it down in the comments. This is the long black Americano. Definitely a better option than the Lungo as we spoke about just a second ago. Let's move on to the next drink. The first milk drink, the Cortado. Now this is a drink that some confounds a few maybe and is a very, very classic drink, especially here in Spain. So I think that kind of made an influence around the world. Um, but Cortado literally just means cut, right? It's, it's cut with milk or to cut, cortar. And so this has been cut with a bit of milk. It's supposed to be equal parts espresso, single espresso, to equal parts uh, steamed milk, foamed milk. And, uh, and so that's why it's in such a small little espresso cup. So this is the exact same size as this. It's just that this uh, has half milk in it. In fact, this is a double shot. Again, they're doing double shots here, but we could, put, we could have put a single with equal parts milk in here. So that's a cortado. But depending on where you go, you might be served a slightly bigger cup. Something like this, for example. This is uh, what they would sometimes serve cortados here in, in this cafe because people want a little bit more milk. You're edging a little bit further into flat white territory, but we'll get to that in just a second. So if you've ever ordered a cortado and you want a little bit more milk, maybe another name for it could be the Gibraltar. Now the Gibraltar was uh, invented, let's say, by the founder of Blue Bottle, or at least that's the story, because it was served in a Libby Gibraltar glass. I don't have that glass here to, to show you, but maybe I'll, I'll throw a quick photo up right here. And, uh, and you can see that it's quite a bit bigger. So it's around a 4.5 ounce cup. That's quite a bit of milk compared to the classic cortado. And then another variation uh, that we can talk about here, it's not exactly a cortado, but that is something you may have heard of, the macchiato. So that's not to be confused with uh, some other brands that have turned the macchiato into a whole different thing. Big, large drinks with uh, caramel or different flavorings added. That's not the traditional macchiato. Macchiato literally means, just like in Spanish, cortado means to cut. Macchiato means marked. It's a marking on the top of the, the espresso drink to tell you that they've also put a little bit of milk in there. So not nearly as much milk as the cortado here, but enough that it gives you a little bit more texture, a little bit more flavor. But because the espresso, with, when it's poured a little bit of milk in there, let's say in, in Italy, you're at the Italian espresso bar, they put a little bit of milk, but you might not be able to tell just by looking at the crema, it might have just sunk right down to the bottom. So they will add a little bit of milk foam and put it right on top of the espresso. It's marked now, so you know that's the one for you. That's the one with a little bit of milk. Let's make some space here for the flat white, small but mighty. Muchas gracias. <laughs> So as you can see, it is, it's quite small. It's, uh, this is a 150 milliliter cup. And the history, a little bit of the history of the flat white is it started in New Zealand. Again, there's a, a, some mixed stories of exactly how it came up. Maybe it was Wellington, maybe it was Auckland. Some may say that it's even Australia. One of the reasons, maybe it was a reaction to the cappuccino, which we'll talk about in a second, where it was a very sort of thick, sometimes even airy or dry foam dolloped on top and they wanted something you know much more smooth much more flat the milk coffee of uh, of that time was going to be a flat white and so much thinner texture on the milk but still foamy silky smooth it's a great drink if you want something a little bit stronger not as big as a cappuccino or latte with with all the milk and so you can see here nice little foam take a sip mm. and to me that's that's a great uh, mix, it's a great ratio. So it's, we're using a double espresso. That's also an important part of the flat white. And so double espresso, filling a cup of around 150 mils. But again, that might depend on the cafe that you go to. I, I do remember walking into some cafes and they were telling me, look, you can order a cappuccino, cafe latte, or a flat white, and we're gonna serve it to you exactly the same way. That could just be kind of a, a style choice. So the flat white, it's become quite popular in recent years. And if it is your favorite coffee drink, definitely hit this video, quick like. And if you have a different version or uh, you know some opinions on how it came to, to be, definitely write that down in the comments. I'd love to, to check it out and, and see how it compares to, to the version that I've heard. So moving on, the flat white was potentially uh, invented as a bit of a reaction to the cappuccino. So this is our next drink. Wow, the cappuccino, amazing. I'm getting over caffeinated here and potentially over milked because this is as you can see, a little bit bigger, 
Again, this might vary depending on the cafe, the cafe, the cafe, the cafe that you go to. The cappuccino was originally named for the color. It was about mixing the espresso with the milk until you got to the color of the cappuccino monk's robes, right? The, the same color as the robes. Now it's evolved over time, but we're using, uh, this is more of a specialty cafe version. It's quite a bit bigger, it's a double shot. And the main difference here will be the thickness of the foam itself. So instead of having that very airy, uh, dry foam that we spoke about, that the flat white may have been a reaction to, this is still nice and silky smooth for the cappuccino here. You can, you can still pour some nice latte art. It's not just this big bulge of, uh, of foam. And there's another myth as well that cappuccino has to have cinnamon on top. So you'll see that a lot. Maybe you're, you're shaking the, the cinnamon, maybe making some really nice designs there, but cappuccino is just another milk drink, uh, just like any other. So if you go to Italy, it might be a little bit smaller than what we have here. This is around uh, 180 milliliters. But again, you, it might be slightly different depending on the, on the coffee uh, shop that you go to. So let's give this a try. Oh yeah, quite a bit thicker here on the foam. People also love to dip their croissants maybe in the, in the cappuccino. Or just eat it like a dessert because it is kind of a dessert here with all the milk that's going on. And I am getting quite buzzed. Next up, we're gonna go to the notorious and sometimes quite misunderstood cafe latte or just the latte. This is, this is how we say it in English. Uh, and it can be somewhat confusing, especially when going and ordering the drink in its native homeland, Italy, because latte, as I'm sure you know, just means milk, right? So you're going, you're ordering a glass of milk. You, everyone's heard the story, the typical let's say Canadian or American tourist heading into an Italian coffee bar, can I get a latte? You get the glass of milk with no coffee in it. But of course, this probably wasn't nearly this big. <laughs> we go all out with the, with the milk in this drink, but that's why I decided to switch it up, get a little bit of oat milk in here. I usually don't drink too much cow's milk. It's interesting to, to try it once in a while, um, but here's the oat milk. Mm. And very different flavor as well. Um, but yeah, that's a lot, lot of milk in there. The latte, it comes again in, in a range of different sizes. If you go to Starbucks, you can order like a 20 ounce latte. Maybe they're gonna put four shots of espresso instead of just two or one. Sort of staying a little bit more local here in Spain, they might call that uh, same drink a cafe con leche, right? So it's the same thing, cafe latte, cafe con leche. And a little bit of an outlier here, the cafe au lait. In, in France, but that's typically a little bit more with maybe a filter coffee, like a French press um, or a strong coffee, and then not as much foaming happening with the milk. So maybe like some more warm milk. So it's a little bit more of like a, a milky coffee. This is a very milky coffee. This happens to be a 200 milliliter cup. You might go to some places and they serve it with a single shot of espresso and less milk, right? So. But typically the latte or the cafe latte will have the most milk. And it can be helpful to remember by just knowing that latte means milk. Oh yeah, that is a, a lot of milk. In fact, I feel like I'm a little bit milked out, over milked, so to speak. But why don't we just switch it up and do a little bit of black coffee. So let's, let's order a nice pour over, nothing added, filter coffee, <laughs> making way for my personal th favorite. Thank you so much. Uh, the filter coffee. I just love a nice, smooth black coffee. This was made in the pour over method that I just mentioned. So this is filter coffee. You may see batch brew on the menu. You may see the specific pour over method like V60, which is what this is. And the V60 is called V60 because it's in the shape of a V at 60 degrees and so it's really great for doing pour overs which we just did here and uh, you get a nice smooth filter brew so we'll, we'll pour the rest out here of course you could have a much bigger one slightly different filters slightly different grind size so this is the chemex and then one last method that you might see what they offer here at abyss is the aeropress and so if you want to check out a, a video on how to how to brew coffee with, with the aeropress it's very fun 
you can click this link right up here. So there we go, that is the, the AeroPress tab. But let's, uh, let's dig into this filter coffee now. It's nice and quiet. The uh, roaster, which we had going over here, is done for the day and we get to enjoy the, the fruits of its labor. The fruits of Pear's labor, the roaster over here. And so this is filter coffee. It's essentially 98.5% water. Uh, if we're gonna talk about different combinations, you might take your espresso and make what they call a red eye. And you might pour that right in there. You want something super strong to keep you up uh, all night for your red eye flight or <laughs> in my case, to keep me going on these two wheels here. So now that we've gotten uh, a good sense of all the different coffee drinks that you may encounter in a cafe, did I miss any? Leave them down in the comments. Did you like this explanation? Definitely hit this video a like. And now would be a great time to subscribe. I'm gonna head out and hit the road. Maybe one last quick sip here.